You need to uh, turn in your resignation. Don't even give them a, sorry, it's recording. Don't even give them a two week notice. Just go on in right now. Tell that pervert manager of yours that you quit. Go home and read the Bible. Bible never says thou shalt not judge. In fact, Jesus told his disciples that when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. What's that? What is it? No, it does not say thou shalt not judge. The words that you said thou shalt not judge. Thou shalt not judge is not in the Bible. Listen up, listen up. Romans 6 does not say thou shalt not judge, you liar. You were like, actually, Romans 6 is a great chapter for you to read. Romans 6 is your homework assignment. All of you perverts need to go read Romans 6 because that's a very good chapter about not sinning. What? What's that? Luke 6? No, it does not. I don't know what version you're reading. No, the closest, the closest to that is actually Matthew 7, 1 through 5. The closest, the closest to that, what you're saying, is Matthew 7, 1 through 5, where it says, Judge not, lest ye be judged, for with what measure you use, that might measure will be given back to you. Why do you tell your brother he has a, a speck in his eye when you have a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, listen up, listen up. Jesus says, first, remove the log from your own eye so that you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Jesus is not saying you can't judge, you cannot judge hypocritically. I am not inside, I am not inside your filthy uh, strip club putting singles or $10 bills down stripper's pants, stripper's G-strings, telling people that uh, adulterers will go to hell. No, I'm not a hypocrite. I removed the log from my own eye so I can see clearly to take the speck out of your eye. But I think working inside of a strip club has uh, perverted your mind to the point where you don't want to hear God's word. What's that? Please, give me some more biblical wisdom there from, from the lady working in a strip club. Are you one of the dancers? Do we have any, are any of you dancers here at the strip club? Are you girls dancers at this strip club? Do you understand? Jesus said that if you cause one of God's little ones to stumble, then it would be better that a millstone be tied around his neck and he'd be cast into the depths of the sea. So if you're causing these men to lust, he's taking complaints. Tell him he's the one taking complaints. Uh, if, uh, if, you are causing, if you are causing other people to sin, Jesus said that it would be better that a huge stone be tied around your neck and you be cast into the depths of the sea. So drowning, so drowning at the bottom of the ocean is actually better than what God has planned for you. Alejandro, Alejandro, don't worry about her. All right, so you have any other uh, Bible verses for me to defend uh, to defend your whoredom? Uh, I do love you. If, if I didn't love you, I'd have walked on by. It's because I love you, I'm warning you that right now you're causing men to lust by this filthy place, and you need to uh, repent. You need to repent and get right with God. That's what you need to do. Yes, I made a wide choice. I want, I want all the men, I want all the perverts out here to make a wise choice and not yes anyone going into that building anyone going into that building with the exception of maybe janitorial staff is a pervert yes they need to uh, go home and uh, take care of their wives or uh, actually uh, go read the bible so they can find a godly wife what's that oh no you don't want to be a christian because you love your sin you love your sin and you love your filthy mouth the jesus said out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks Jesus said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that's why uh, you have a sewer in your heart. That's why you have such a potty for a mouth. Wicked heart. You know, you're a little pretty face. You know what uh, the Bible says? The Bible says that a beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a pig with a gold ring in its snout. You need to read that. It's in Proverbs. That a beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a pig with a gold ring in its snout. That's what you look like to a holy and righteous God. A filthy pig with a gold ring in its mouth and its nut snout, thinking that it's beautiful when, it's, when you're filthy before God. The Bible says that a, a godly woman will dress with modest apparel. A godly woman will dress with modest apparel. I don't think the strippers inside there are dressed modestly. If they're dressed at all, I don't know. 
Uh, no, I wouldn't step foot in a place like that other than to uh, be in all-out full rebuke mode. I'd have to wear a blind. I'd have to wear a blindfold, and then I might bump into a table. I don't want to support uh, support your wickedness. The Lord, the you know, the words of God. You ready? The words of God have been brought before you today. Words of God have been brought before you today. Your blood will not be upon my hands. Record and we'll record. There we go. All right. You, who? You got some sinner friends that are going to be watching this? All right. I want you guys, I want you to put this up on Facebook. Send it out to the biggest uh, sinners you know. Make sure you get a shot of the, the sign here. Are you willing? Which one of you guys is willing to uh, commit yourself? No, no, no. Well, I'll take it, but I'm warning you, I'll dump it out onto the, onto the ground. If that's what you're going to do. Why don't you give it to me? It's mine to do it. Who's willing? Who's willing? Anyone? Look at all these kids. The next generation. We need you. We need the next generation. We need the next generation to rise up. Are you willing? Are you willing? I'm doing something for your cause. Are you willing? No, that's not doing anything for the cause. That's just mocking. You're being mockers and scoffers. Peter said in the last days, mockers and scoffers will come. What's that? I'm just curious what your concerns are. Concerns is we want we want as many people as possible to go to heaven, and uh, I fear that on a day like this, there's a lot of drunkenness, there's a lot of lusting, a lot of violence and foul-mouthed people. So, uh, so if you're sober-minded and, and you're a Christian and you're living holy and obediently to God, I say go for it, and I say get in there, I say get in there and uh, tell this lost and dying world to be saved. But if you're out here being a friend of the world then I'm here to warn you that the Bible says that friendship with the world is enmity towards God. So if you're being a friend of the world, then you're being an enemy of God. So what are you? Are you, uh, which, are you on the broad road leading to destruction? Or are you on the narrow path leading to everlasting life? Who's, who's willing? So far, the altar, calls, the altar calls have been a little disappointing Talk here to today. He might be who's willing? We need the next generation to rise up. Because I don't know if the generation after you, if there's going to be almost anybody that's going to be saved. I think the largest number of uh, people that have entered into heaven in the last 50 years are aborted babies. I think aborted babies are the highest number of people that have entered into God's kingdom in the last 50 years. Uh, because I think once people become adults and they taste their sin, there's so few people, especially in America, who are willing to give up their sin. Who's willing? Who's willing? We need you guys, the next generation, who's willing to put down their booze, stop with their potty mouth, stop lusting after these girls, and get right with God and live obediently and holy to Him. Sooner or later, they're going to kill us, or we're going to die of old age. We need the next generation. Anyone, anyone from your generation willing to live obediently to the Lord Jesus Christ? Anyone? Okay, we move on to the next tailgate party. Let's go. So that's what the Bible says today, folks. Each and every person out here today is a slave to something. Each and every person out here today is a slave to something. The Bible says you are a slave to that which you obey, either sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Now listen, listen to the outcome. Which outcome do you prefer? One, you're going to be a slave to one or two, or one of two things. One, the outcome is death, which isn't good. The other, the outcome is uh, righteousness. That's very good. So a slave to sin, uh, that's going to lead to your death. That's very bad. So if you don't want a bad outcome, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out, then don't be a slave to your sin. Jesus Christ can set you free. What sin is it that you're a slave to today? What sin is it? You can come up on this grassy knoll. You can make your way up to the grassy, dirty knoll and uh, confess what sin is it that you are a slave to today? What what sin are you a slave to today? Is it pornography? Is it drunkenness? Is it lust? What is it? There, there, you got a big smile on your face. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. What's that smile mean? Jesus Christ can set you free, but you've got to want to be free from that sin. You have got to want to be free from your sin. You want, you want to be free from your sin? What's that? How do you know? How do you know? You what? You drank it all away. No, 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 no. Maybe that's your brain cells. That's your brain cells that you're free from, that you drank all away. But not, uh, not your sin. Who, who's ready? Who's ready 
need us to tell what, what they're a slave. What sin are you a slave to out there today? Jesus Christ can set you free. Uh, my friend Dylan here has a sign. So flip, flip that sign around there, Dylan. And that comes from that comes to you compliments of 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. What's that? What's that? the Lord, the word can go forth, the word can go forth, but there's coming a day, folks, there's coming a day uh, when when, uh, when the, the, the world will be so filled with wickedness and so many people will be against God that the word won't be able to go forth, that's probably what happened in the days of Noah, that's probably what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, God is just a great mathematician, God is a great mathematician, and when he sees when he sees a society of the world reach a point where the next generation has zero possibility of even hearing anything about salvation or Jesus Christ, then the great mathematician can uh, do the numbers and wipe them out, bring the children up to heaven, and put all the unrepentant uh, adults into hell, start all over again. That's what he did in the days of Noah, that's what he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. But we ended up right back here again, right back here again, and we're reaching the point where uh, there's coming a day, probably sooner than you think, that God's words won't even be able to be sent forth. As soon as someone opens up their mouth to give you the message of salvation, uh, the, uh, the Antichrist society will come down upon it with violence and kill them. Jesus told his disciples, Jesus told his disciples that there'll come a day when men will throw you out of the synagogue and they will kill you and think that they're doing a, a favor to God. There's coming a day when this society will be so wicked that when a true messenger of God comes out to tell them about salvation, that they will kill them and think they're doing God some big favor. Let me tell you something. So uh, Dylan, go ahead and turn that around again. Uh, this comes to you compliments of 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. And that's what we're out here to do, uh, to tell you 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. That gives you a small list, a small list of... Uh, sins, and if you're on that list, lift it up a little higher, Dylan, show everybody. If you're on that list there, uh, on this banner that he's holding up, you're in a lot of trouble with God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither idolater, nor adulterer, nor fornicator, nor homosexual offender, nor drunkard, nor thief, nor slanderer, nor swindler will inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, so let's, how about idolaters? Do we have any idolaters? By show of hands, do we have any idolaters out there in the crowd? Now, uh, that doesn't mean you have to bow down before a golden calf. An idolater is anyone, uh, anyone who puts something above God with their time, money, passion. Uh, have you spent, do you spend more money? Think about last football season. Last football season, did you spend more time, money, and passion on uh, sports, football, college teams, Panthers, and all? Did you spend more money on frivolous sports entertainment than you did uh, bringing people to the kingdom of Jesus Christ? If you spent more time and money and passion on sports than you did uh, telling people about Jesus last football season, uh, you are a sports idolater. You're guilty of idolatry. You need to. Yes, Jesus is number one. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Jesus is number one. Thank you. Please, uh, if you're going to say Jesus is number one, do it with an index finger, not your middle finger. Yes, all lives matter. All lives matter to Jesus Christ. All lives matter. Here we go. All lives matter to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about your skin. It's about your sin. It's not about your skin. It's about your sin. All your skin color is is a little bit of melanin. That's all your skin color is. Just a little bit of melanin in your epidermis. That's all it is. Other than that, 
You still have the same red blood as everyone else. There is only one race. Acts chapter 17, verse 26 tells us that there is only one race. It says that all men have been made from one blood. All men have been made from one blood. Uh, and God has determined, predetermined their time and history and the place that they would live in the hopes that they would grope for him and search for him to find him, though he is not far from any of us. It doesn't matter whether your skin color is black, white, yellow, green, or polka dot. Jesus Christ is looking at your heart. He wants you to rend your heart and not your garments. Jesus Christ is looking at your heart. And he said, out of the overflow of...